Hey everybody, my name is Valentina V and welcome to 4 Minute Film School. Today we're talking about how to light the same location in two different genres. We're doing a 50s sitcom and a slasher horror movie. You ready? Bobby. Bobby. No, let's go. Bobby, close your mouth. No, he's misbehaving. Danny, I'm just gonna give you to him. This is Bobby and Danny from Honey Crates. Honey Crates is a lighting control grid system. We have them for lights, we have them for grip frames, and uh, we have them for just about anything you'd want to uh, help control light and direct it. That makes sense, Bobby, because in today's episode, we are talking about how to light in a studio space for two different genres, for a 50s sitcom and for a slasher horror flick, how to rig lights in the way that makes those genres really stand out and how to frame for those genres. Our whole shot is we have a beautiful, you know, 50s style um, mother. She's picking up the pie. She's walking over to the table, handing it to her son here. She's really happy about it. Well, at least that's what she thinks is happening. In reality, she just fed him body parts. Smash cut to the horror show over here. And everything has transformed from gumdrops and candy and beauty into like slimy guts, essentially. And that is what's actually happening because she is a cannibal. So for the production design, this location, it's kind of meant to look like two locations. This way is a kitchen and this way is a bedroom. But we're only really shooting, we're only really seeing here. So it's 50s. I'm really working with the color advantage here and patterns that we have. We do have the pattern on the wall and we also have pattern on the curtains and the panels. And then I'm going to also add a lot of jars with more color in it with the scheme of pastel 50s. What about the floor? What are you thinking here? So I think I'm going to run around the studio and try to find something a little bit more warm to complement the backboard there which is a lot cooler and this space itself, it's very cool in the sense of white walls and blue tones. The only thing we have going for us is this pattern here that does have some color in it and some of the hints. Mm -hmm. So in order to separate everybody else, all the characters and items from the ground, we should add some color down here. And then when we switch it up completely for the horror thing, what are we gonna do with the production design? We are going to take whatever is inside the jars. I'm going to switch all of the happy stuff into gory fingers, eyeballs. I'm going to actually use a lot of candy and food coloring to make it look real. I think in this case, the lighting and the production design plays really well together for this particular shot because as long as whatever she's holding is wet, that hard backlight is gonna reflect off of it and it's gonna just look nasty. Our camera today is the Alexa Mini with the rehoused Nikkor Primes. The photography lenses that have been rehoused into cinema lenses so that we can pull focus on them remotely. And because this is a 50s sitcom look, I'm doing a couple of things differently than that traditional cinematic look. First, I'm framing for four by three, which is why I have my Ninja on here, because that has those crop bars, so I can get an approximation of what the final crop will look like. Second, I'm not filming at the shallowest depth of field, because those cameras on those studios at those times, they were shooting at like, what, F11? Because they had super, super bright lights up top in a grid. So we're going to try to estimate that as much as possible with the amount of light that we have in here. So I'm also gonna shoot this scene with my camcorder. Why? Because it's a different look. It's more of a, definitely more analog, definitely a little bit of an older style. I mean, ideally I would shoot this on actual film, but I'm terrified of that. So this is the next best thing, my camcorder from 2003. So we're here at Ideal Sets, which has a bunch of standing sets, but it doesn't have a grid like you would at a studio that has a sitcom. But here, we have a little bit of an issue. How do we get that soft overhead light? So we came up with this solution, rather than building a, a structure and taking the time overhead, we wanted to take the time to film. So we put up eight by eight, with a honey crate, an egg bite honey crate to control and direct the lights because we're up against the wall here and we want to start taking it off of the side. So without it getting too many flags and stands above, the honey crate directs the light and also controls it off of the side. 
It's backed up with a, looks like a half grid. Yeah, this is a half grid and we're double breaking it with a four by of Opal. We have a 600D up there with the F10 Fresnel and another 600D Pro with that hyper reflector going right into it. Essentially, the idea is we create a big soft source mm -hmm. for our key so that there are no shadows. On the grip side of the rigging, you'll notice the stands all have bags on them for extra safety. People trip, fall, anything happens here, these, this equipment could fall over. Sandbags are very necessary and it's rigged very professionally. So we put up this frame right here uh, with the honey crate and you did something really fun here. Yeah, so basically it's like a very standard thing when we are working on the shoot with many racks, we usually like to tie the bag around the frame. So right after we wrap the rag, it will go directly into it and you don't get all the bags mixed up and the different racks. Yeah, it's like really lightweight yeah. and it doesn't affect mm -hmm. the lighting yeah. at all. In order to fill the space with even more light and have flatter light, we're filling it in with a 60D, which is bouncing up into a 4x8 bounce. And that's creating even more fill. In a lot of these 50s shows, they also had backlights or hair lights behind the actor's heads. So here for the actor's head, we have a 60D with a softbox on it. So that's gonna be directional, but still soft. And since it's pretty close to the sun, we don't need a more powerful light. The 60D will do just great. For the other backlight, I had a choice. Am I going to give her that backlight at her A mark or at her B mark? I decided to do it at the B mark because that's where she lands and that's where the real reaction from the sun happens. So we have this 300D2 with the Fresnel on it, with the barn doors. Attached to the barn doors is a little bit of 250 diffusion to again, make it directional but soft so that when she lands forward, that is her hair light coming from the side. So we haven't shot our first setup yet, but we're already a little bit pre-rigged for our second setup. Yeah, no, that's that's good. Pre-rigging, getting ready because this is up out of your shot. You've rigged with another stand over the top with a, looks like an Estera tube. Has a bunny crate baby beyond, which again, controls it, keeps the light off the wall. Just controls and, and right, and shine right on her, keep it off the wall, off the background, off the sides. So it's just another tool as opposed to having to use a bunch of flags and, and arms out over there just to do the same thing. Now it's just one piece of equipment that only has five uh, Velcro straps to attach it and bam, you're ready to go. It needs to be really low profile. The actress is gonna be very close to the wall. So she needs a little bit of a key because we're motivating it from that window. So we're wrapping it around the front and we're using that tube as sort of a light wrap. And it should look dramatic. It should look dramatic. That's the goal. Drama. Comedy, drama. Flat, not flat. <laughs> dramatic. Drama. Just walk in a straight line and kind of lean over his glass. Pictures up, quiet on set, let's roll. All right, that was great. Let's transition to the horror scene now. So apart from the lighting changing completely from big soft sources to more hard focused light and the framing and the camera movement, we're also changing the frame rates here. So we shot the 50s style scene in 30 frames per second. This is what TV is broadcast at. It makes it look a little bit more soap opera like, a little bit more hyper real. And now we're changing it to that cinematic 24 frames per second that we're all familiar with. Now in a normal scene, when you go from one shot to the other, you wanna keep everything consistent, right? Lighting, continuity with the props and all of that. But in this case, it's what's in her mind versus what is actually happening. So we can move things around. We can change around the production design. We can move the curtains out. The lighting's completely different. So it's okay, it actually sells the effect even more. As far as the lighting here, our previous key light was just a big soft source on the camera side of her face. In this case, our key light is actually gonna be on the far side and it's gonna be a hard light. So we're playing with a lot more dimension. We're playing with a lot more contrast between the bright side and the dark side. 
Behind the window, obviously, we just see a brick wall. We're playing this like it's daytime, there's another apartment right up against this apartment, so it's fine that there's brick. We did add some white gaff tape to hide this railing so that it wouldn't be that like really bright silver streak going through the middle. And we lit it up with a 600D with a Fresnel F10 that's going into a bounce. And that's just casting a very soft light. The bounce is coming from up top because it's supposed to be the sun. It's supposed to be like the middle of the day. In order to break up that left side wall so it's not just like a bleh white wall, we wanna put a light through this window. So we have the 60D with the mini spotlight mount and it is up high, so it's imitating that sun as well. And it is coming straight through the window. So not only are these panes of the window cutting that light, but there is a gobo of a leaf pattern inside of it. So it's not just like a straight block of light that's coming through, it's a little bit more dappled, it looks a little bit more organic and natural. Here we have a 300D2 with a spotlight mount. The spotlight mount is literally, that's what it is, it's a spotlight. So it sends a beam of light, a column of light into one particular spot. In this case, it's going up here to this tiny little mirror board. It's actually called a light bridge and it comes in several flavors, all the way from one, which is the hardest bounce, to four, which is a more soft bounce. Here we have a two. The reason that I wanted it up here as a hard bounce is because when our subject is holding the item right here, we want this to be highlighted specifically. So instead of mounting this entire apparatus up there, it's much easier to just mount that little mirror board. And it's super directional. It highlights it from the back, giving it that ominous sort of specialty light. All right, that looks awesome. That's a wrap, everybody. Woo! Yeah. Good job. High five. High five. Yeah. Good job, Bob. Thanks. High five. If people want to find you online, where can they find you? Uh, at Honeycrates. And Honeycrates.com is our website. And then we also have Instagram and Facebook, uh, Honeycrates. Well, thank you so much, Bob, and thank you so much, Danny, for being here. If you want to follow them, it's all down below. If you want to follow me, it's all down below. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We talked all about how to light for different genres. I want to know in the comments, how would you light for TV? I mean, what genre would it be? How would you light it? Explain it to me for a chance to win an Aperture MC light. My name is Valentina V. You can find my social media down below. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the Aperture channel. Until next time, Bob, happy shooting. Oh, thank you, and love you, Bob. Oh! <laughs> Bob is always comedy gold. Welcome to the dark side. We have brains and jelly beans.